Hello and welcome to this mini lesson from Inside the Portal. Today we are looking at two things, spectatorship and hooliganism. Now these two things are very closely linked and what we'll actually see is how spectatorship can sort of funnel into this, this thing called hooliganism. But to start with we're going to look at some pros and cons of spectatorship to sport and performance. So to start with, some benefits. Well the benefit number one has got to be increased revenue. This has so many impacts on both performers, the sports, the grounds, the clubs, the media, everything. Because as soon as there's eyeballs on an event, businesses are putting money in for commercial interests, spectators are spending money on merchandise and tickets just to be there. Because spectatorship is, is being there in the moment, it's watching it, it's tuning in, it's attending a sporting event live. So it might mean in the ground itself or actually at the sporting venue, it might be listening on the radio where some adverts might play in between or uh, different breaks during the, during the play. But all of that can generate additional revenue. Other benefits could be that it might inspire them to participate themselves. So they might enjoy watching it so much that they then get inspired to go out and try and be just like the role models that they've been watching within the activity. So that can actually improve that healthy, act uh, healthy active lifestyle movement. But there are some drawbacks. And some drawbacks to sport could be some hostility. It could require additional building work or different, different segregated seating. It could cause undue stress on the performers. But for others, it might lead to better performances because there's now increased stakes. There's more, there's more potential reward on the table. So performers might take that extra pressure and they increase their performance. If they are able to do that, then we have this thing that we can call a home field advantage. Spectators are usually there supporting one person or a team, and there's usually an opponent or a different team. They're obviously going to cheer louder for the people that they're there to support, and those people are going to benefit if the majority of the spectators are there for them, because they've got that positivity behind them. They might feel a little less afraid of failing, because it's their fans. They might be a little bit more understanding. It's not going to be the opponents who might show them hostility or aggression if they do badly. But in the same vein, having people there watching them, the number of eyeballs goes up, the amount of money perhaps at stake or the success at stake, the fame at stake, that might all get too much and that might put pressure on them and their performance starts to deteriorate as a result. So spectatorship is good for the sport, it's good for the performers, but there are some drawbacks. That hostility, the, the ground and the event organisers need to think about the segregation or the, the movements of the spectators because of this final point here, which is violence between fans or violence between the spectators themselves, which is where we introduce this term over here, hooliganism. Now, hooliganism is intent to cause harm or disruption secondary to sport viewership. So people might attend a sporting event, and here's where we might have two different categories. But people attend a sporting event, but they're going to cause disruption. They might be going to cause harm. They go with the intent to be violent. They might feel a stronger affiliation to their gang culture than they do the, the people that they're actually going to go and support on the pitch or in the stands. 
So hooliganism is when people are violent towards others. We're sort of we're moving away now from the benefits and drawbacks to the sport and the performers. Hooliganism now is between the fans, between the spectators. And what we have, causes, effects, and some possible solution. So what can cause hooliganism to occur? Well, the big thing is rivalry. I'll just section that off, make it a little bit clearer. Rivalry between the teams, between the fans. It could be a postcode. It could be two different teams or opponents who have a bad history. So it could be a long-standing tradition to have aggressive or violent actions occurring between the fans. Height can come into it as well where there might be one single event, such as a, an international tournament like the Euros or the World Cup, in football that is, and there's loads of time for the media to stir up the interest, to, pros to possibly bring up bad blood that happened before. So previous results that went down in a certain way and there was a bit of unfairness, and then that plays into this hype. People have lots of time to get almost overexcited about going to the event, and that can then lead to some violence. Frustration. So fans who follow a sport or a team, and they don't get the satisfaction from the results, they look for some other outlet, and that might come in the form of fighting or violence between the opponents who have blocked them. We could have drug consumption. Now this could be legal, such as alcohol, or it could be illegal. But drugs can alter someone's thought processes. It can alter people's decision-making um, well, processes that they go through. And as a result, they might be more susceptible to mob mentality. I'll put that down here as well. Mobs or gang culture. It might make them more susceptible to trying to appear to be masculine. And they might have no fear because their thought processes are clouded by drugs that they might have consumed. So if we were to put all of this into sort of a melting pot, we would probably get a spectator who is fueled with anger and frustration and substances who are in groups trying to prove themselves to be fearless and, and macho or masculine, whatever those terms mean. And as a result, they, they try and display this by causing disruption, causing harm, damaging property, hurting other people. And it might be people who are almost feeling this prior to going to the sport, and they know full well that they're going to be the hooligans. But other people might go with you know, zero intention of doing this, but they get wrapped up as a result. They might get drawn into doing this if some of these gradually get ticked off along their way. So what are some of the effects? What are some downsides to this? Well, the big one is safety. Not just for the hooligans, because let's, let's say that you know, we, we remove their safety as a concern because they've chosen to do that. But the people who are there who aren't involved with this, it might be a case of mistaken identity. They might be there nearby to people who are feeling disruptive and the opponents come in and, and mistake them for them, and they could get wrapped up in it. So the safety of them is a huge concern. The reputation, if I to put the rep, the reputation of a club with hooligans that follow them, that can get dragged through the mud. Opponents might not want to set up fixtures with this club if they know that their fans are likely to run into trouble with the opponent's fans. With that, might come fines. If there is some form of destruction of property, or there are some penalties that need to be paid by uh, or to the higher governing bodies, it's likely to be the teams, the clubs, that have to foot that bill. Not the actual hooligans that might manage to get away with it somehow, but the damage that's left behind, it might be the teams who are left accountable. So the safety, that's number one priority. That becomes at risk for the other viewers, the other spectators. The reputation, 
the fines that might be incurred by the teams or the clubs that the hooligans are associated with. So what can be done? How can we solve some of these issues? First we have early start times. Early start times removes the, not possibility, but it reduces the amount of consumption that could possibly occur. It could limit the amount of people that are able to get to the ground or get to the, the sporting event on time. So it might help keep some hooligans out and the ones who do make it, they might be in slightly more better, slightly more better, a slightly better state of mind and they might be less likely to cause disruption. On the topic of drugs, especially alcohol, alcohol could be prohibited or at least restricted on the premises or within a, a perimeter of the, of the ground or the sporting event. So it might be that pubs have to close at a certain time before the event starts, giving the spectators a window of time where they can't actually consume anything more. Again, it might keep them in that better state of mind. And lastly, I'm going to put in here logistics. Now, within logistics, there's a number of things that can be done. It could be how the spectators get into the grounds. It could be the actual ground setup. So are the opponents segregated from the moment they turn up, the away team, let's say, until the moment that they're sat down and then the moment that they leave again. The more segregated they are, the further apart that they're kept from the opponents, the less likely a clash might occur. And lastly, we put here security. Now this encompasses lots of things, such as CCTV cameras, such as more security personnel on site, such as a higher or greater police presence around the ground or the sporting event. It might be post hooligan occurrences, and there's actually watch teams who can now look over some footage, identify the, the troublemakers, and then they can ban them from the ground. Facial recognition is huge, and it can actually prevent people from being able to purchase international air tickets to get to the place where an event might be happening in the future. So by identifying who they are, naming and shaming and punishing them with fines or prison sentences, it starts to deter the younger populations or those who are possibly on the fringe of this mob gang mentality. It might be enough to deter them, and it can stop the ringleaders the people who have been caught from actually attending again in the future, which is everything. So spectatorship is people going to watch. Lots of benefits, increased revenue, can promote participation, but some downsides, it can stress the performers out if they don't benefit from that home field advantage. And then violence could break out between the fans, which we term hooliganism, whereby someone is going to the sport either to watch it primarily, but also cause violence, or they just go primarily to cause violence and they don't even care about the sport. What causes it? Some rivalry, some history, the media hype, this mob mentality. What are the effects or the violence? The safety of the attendees is compromised. The reputation, the, the destruction, the fines, the reparations that might need to be paid by the teams and the clubs that the hooligans are associated with and then some solutions. We can bring the start times earlier to avoid excessive consumption of drugs or alcohol that could actually cause some violence. The logistics of where the fans are going, how they get there, where they go when they actually arrive, and then perhaps how they leave the event venue as well. And then the security. Who is on watch? The police, the security personnel, is there CCTV? Are there enough numbers? and what's happening after the event. Are they tracking and banning those involved? And that is that, spectatorship and hooliganism. So I hope you found that useful, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye for now.